Hey there, I'm Alex, and today I'm very excited to finally be talking about Gaussian splats inside of Nuke. As you might know, a few months ago I did a few videos on Gaussian splats, how to train them, how to get started with them, so that's still relevant today if it's something you're interested in getting into. Back then, I was just hopeful. I, I didn't know there was a plugin coming, but I just figured it seemed like a technology that would be very fitting to have in Nuke, so I'm very happy that now is the time. A few weeks ago, a developer released a plugin for Nuke, and that's what I'm going to be covering today. And the developer was also kind enough to offer a free license of the plugin to one of my viewers. So if you want to participate for a chance to win that license, all you need to do is be subscribed to the channel, give it a thumbs up and leave a comment at the bottom. And then after a week, I'll do a random drawing and reach out to the winner. I'm really excited to finally have Gaussian splats inside of Nuke. So let's just get into it. What I have on screen right now is the reason why I was so hopeful and so excited about Gaussian splats ever coming into Nuke. The idea of quickly photographing an asset or, or recording a video of it and then just quickly training a Gaussian splat that you could then bring into Nuke and place in 3D space seemed like a no-brainer to me. So I was so happy when a few weeks ago I saw that there was a release for this plugin that I immediately reached out to the developer. He was kind enough to provide me with a key, so keep that in mind. I did get this for free, but I have no guidelines on what I can say or what I can't say about this plugin. What I'm telling you right now is my honest opinion, and to be fair, I think it's great. It's not perfect, but it is a start. I'm really excited to be able to have this in Nuke now. Let me walk you quickly through what the setup looks like, right? So we have, obviously we have a plate, right? And that plate I've gone ahead and I've tracked and I've calculated distortion for it so that when I do my Gaussian splat as a render, I can just apply the distortion so that it sticks correctly onto my scene. And then when you install the plugin, you get this new node. So the Gaussian splatting node and within it, there's a bunch of options that I'll walk you through some of in a minute. And this is a plugin that you can actually find on the AE scripts website. And it's only $50, which I find incredibly affordable and like i said it just it works right like i'm perfect but it works and it works really well keep in mind that the gaussian splats that i have aren't the best quality it's just stuff that i've been testing and playing around with but if you do it right in the right lighting conditions with a better camera you can do so much more than i'm already doing and, I, and to me it just seems like a no-brainer to have this in your arsenal so you can come to the site and you can actually read up on it like there's some good examples of what the developer has done you can have a lot more effects than than maybe I'm going to be covering, but definitely come here and check it out. There's there's a lot to see, a lot of examples. And like I said, for $50, it just seems like a no-brainer to have. If you decide to go that route, keep in mind that there is pretty decent documentation for it. So there's uh, this Eurealix website. And again, like always, I'm going to be posting links to everything on the description below. And this one walks you through everything from, from the installation to how to get quickly get started. So very helpful to have this. Because sometimes plugins have minimal documentation, but this has more than enough to get you started. Not only that, but I've been reaching out to the developer and we've been chatting back and forth about issues and implementations and he's been nothing but responsive. So definitely reach out if there's something you want to see or, so, or an issue you run into. He's actually welcoming feedback, so definitely reach out. Another thing to keep in mind is that at the moment, it's not going to be evolving for a bit. He's in the process of porting this into Linux. So Linux version is coming. Once the Linux version is completed, then he's going to go back and start adding on top of what's already there. Let me show you why this is so impactful and why I think it's so exciting to not have it inside Nuke. Of course, with the example that I was showing you before, it's just I have this little toy truck that I trained a few months ago, and then I can just literally just place it anywhere in space. And if I want to, you know, move move the camera around, I can. So I'm just animating the Gaussian splat itself instead of the camera. And it's as simple as just, you know, we, we just move it in space and we have full coverage as if it were a 3D model, right? So that's already pretty cool. I'm going to go ahead and zero that out. And I have a, a few other, other examples here. So it doesn't necessarily need to be an asset. It could just be something that you're adding to the background, right? If you want to add something to a matte painting and you have a lot of camera parallax and it's something that you don't have to spend ages just doing projections, you can just very quickly do something like this and have something that'll sit properly and will, will have the proper parallax with just a few pictures, just a bit of an, or, an orbit video would do it and, and able to train something as simple as this. Keep in mind that you can do something as complex as foliage, right? Foliage is something that's incredibly hard to do. And if you can just do a few Gaussian splats of, you know, trees, bushes, whatever it is that you need, Need, you can get away with a lot. So my example here is just there's an abandoned car, but look at the detail inside of the of the little bushes and the little leaves there. Like having that be done, not in a Gaussian splat way, would take a lot of effort. Again, it's all about being crafty and being smart. It's not about replacing other departments. This is just about being able to leverage what's there and making it, you know, as fast as possible, depending on your needs. Let me give you a quick demo of how this works. I'm gonna go here to the side, and all I want to bring in now is I want to bring in the 
regression splatting node. So you can just search for regression splatting once you have it installed, and that'll bring you to this node. If we go here into the properties, what you'll see is that you can actually load a bunch of models at the same time. I'm of the mind that I like to do one at a time and keep them localized into each node. I think it would just get a bit messy if you have many models loaded at the same time under one node. But if that's something you like, there's an option to do that. So you can, it looks like you can load up to 10 models. So let me show you how to bring that in. So I'm going to open up the option here for model one, right? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click the folder here and I'm going to navigate to that PLY file. From here, I'm going to select my truck O2 PLY. So remember that's the, the file we're going to be exporting from PostShot. If you need to learn how to train your first Gaussian splat, check that video that I did a few months ago on training your first Gaussian splat. Now that we have that selected here, that's kind of it. Now that node is going to be referencing that file. But because unfortunately at the moment we cannot see it in 3D space, we need to be able to come back here to the tool. And then from here, you want to actually come to the very last option here where it says export point cloud. And here you can set a few options like point density and point scale. And then you're going to be selecting export to Alembic. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. I've already exported the truck before, but I'm going to go ahead and, and do it again. So I'm going to do truck underscore 002 and then make sure that you put the dot Alembic file there because sometimes I, I don't know why it wasn't auto completing for me. So make sure that you put the, the period and then the ABC. So once you have that done, you want to go ahead and click save and that should be kind of it. So now it tells you that the file has been successfully exported. So we can go ahead and click OK. So next you want to go ahead and bring in a geo import node and keep in mind that if you try to connect the camera here that is from the old 3d system in nuke it's just going to crash every time so make sure that when you do connect the camera it is from the new 3d system in nuke so that's why i'm using a geo import node for the geo import node you can just uh, navigate to wherever you saved that ply file was so here i'm selecting my truck underscore zero zero two that i just exported a minute ago i'm going to go ahead and select open and then we are set up with a point cloud. So if I zoom out here for you, and if I look into my 3D scene, what you'll see is that we have a point cloud of our truck. You can you can more or less see the silhouette. Once you have that, the next thing you want to go ahead and do is bring in a geotransform node. And the reason why you want to use a geotransform node is that you want to be able to place this in space in the correct place, depending on, on what camera or what scene you're trying to use. And this is the way of actually being able to see it in space. Before we continue, the next thing I'm going to go ahead and do is bring in a camera and again we want to make sure that the camera is the, the new 3d camera not the legacy or, or the old 3d camera system from, from nuke and once you have that connected let's say i'm going to view here my gaussian splat because we already have a camera connected and because i know that when i exported my gaussian splat i set it to be at world space zero i'm going to go ahead and move my camera back quite a bit so that when i view my my plugin here and i can see already the gaussian splat of that truck so i'm going to go ahead and set my scene here to hd just to to keep things rather speedy so that it can it can render a, a bit faster and then from here you can you can start let's say we can we can start moving moving our camera so i'm going to go ahead it's too much so there we go and from here you want to go into again into your gaussian splatting node and if we look at the options here we have a few options that we want to deal with remember where before i was trying to move the point cloud the way you want to do this is you want to be able to preview this in 3d of course so that you can see what the camera is seeing right so that's why i have it set up like this but you need to link your geo transform into your gaussian splatting node because otherwise you're kind of flying blind right and that's what i don't think is perfect about the implementation right now like i hope i could just look at this and see a point cloud in space and not have to deal with a separate stream but that's where we're at so let's that's why i'm covering so i'm going to go ahead and select again my gaussian splatting node here and then i am going to go here into the options and open the transform options so the one transform so for the first model and then then I am going to select my geo transform node. I'm going to open the properties for it, open the properties for the geo Gaussian splatting node. And then I'm going to expression link the options from the geo transform node into the Gaussian splatting transform position. So that way, whatever transformations I do to the Alembic point cloud will happen to the Gaussian splats themselves. So it's a bit of a workaround of not being able to view it in 3D space other than through that Alembic point cloud. So I'm going to go ahead and control click and drag onto the transform position here. And 
I'm also going to go ahead and zero out any transformations that I have done to my Alembic. So that way, if I look through this again, because I know the camera is pointing there. Now, if I go ahead and close the Gaussian splatting node and I just look at the options for the geo transform node, if I start translating this, let's say in Y, you see now, because that's expression length, now we can see the transformation happening on the Gaussian splat. A bit convoluted, but it's straightforward once you get it. I hope the implementation changes in the future where we don't need to do this sort of stuff, but it's, it's more of a 3D node that we just connect and render through a scan line like you would expect. But for now, even having this, I think is a big win. Again, I'm gonna go ahead and select my Gaussian splatting. And this time I'm going to be opening again the settings for the geo transform. And now I'm also going to expression link the transform rotation option inside the Gaussian splatting node. So I'm gonna go ahead and select the rotation here, I'm going to expression link it. So that way, again, if I close the options for the Gaussian splatting node and I just keep my geo transform node, if I rotate this guy here, then we get that rotation appearing as the render inside the Gaussian splatting node. A bit of a workaround, but it works. So it's, it, I guess it's still a pretty big win. Depending on how you want to work, you want to make sure that you clean up that Gaussian splat as much as you can before you hit nuke. You want this plugin to do as little as possible in terms of propping, cleaning it up. There are options, like I said, and if you go in, in the documentation, there's all sorts of stuff like effects, crops. I'm not terribly interested in that stuff. I'm trying to make my Gaussian splat as good as possible before I hit nuke so that when I am just dealing in nuke, I'm just placing it in space and then rendering it. So that would be sort of the, the ideal scenario for me. You can still select stuff like crop and what you can have control here over is let's say you didn't clean up your Gaussian splat properly. So again, Gaussian splats are tricky because it, it'll never be as clean as a model, obviously. And there's issues like it won't cast a shadow yet because there's no geometry to cast shadows from. So there are some things you need to work around. So you can always come here to the crops and let's say we want to enable shape and we want to do a shape preview. I'll just show you a bit of a, of a sphere there or a bit of a box. And if let's say we keep it at sphere and I enable that, that crop, you can see because I have it already cropping into the model, then it's eating away at it. So I'm going to go ahead and set it to, to box. And like I said, you, I'm not in the need of doing this because I've already done this before I hit nuke. But if it's something that you wanted to, you can still do some cleanup if it's something you really, really needed. Let's say we wanted to clean that, that ground a bit more. So I'm, I'm going to go ahead and zero out this here. And I'm going to just move it up in Y. And you can see how, you know, with minimal effort, we, we get a bit of a, of a better result. It looks like cropping the back. So I'm, I need to go ahead and expand the back a bit. I'm going to expand on the X as well. Something that you have an option to do. Not a big fan of doing it this way, but you have the option. Once you're happy with it, I'm going to go ahead and turn off this crop shape preview right here. And then the, the scene more or less takes over, right? If, if you want to go ahead and, and move your camera back, you can. And if you want to rotate the camera, you can. Again, you, you treat it just like you would a 3D model, which is pretty great. That's kind of it. It's quite powerful. You can do a lot with very little. It's not meant to replace stuff like a proper 3D render. But again, it's all about being crafty and smart when it comes to how and when to use it. Now that I cover that, I wanted to walk you through a few of the limitations on things that I hope get implemented in the future. If I go back to my old scene here, what you'll notice is that as soon as the truck hits the edge of the frame here, we're getting that issue. And that's because I'm applying the distortion to the output of the Gaussian splatting node. And because it doesn't have a control for overscan, when it gets hit by that distortion, unfortunately, there's no way around it at the moment. It'll just run out of pixels, essentially, in order to be able to be distorted correctly into the plate. That's one. I think it's it's quite important. I've already flagged it with the developer, but I hope that that's something that gets fixed rather quickly. The next one is that because we don't have any render controls over what is coming out of this node, we don't have motion blur controls, which again, I think is key. Again, I flagged it with the developer. But at the moment, just like I've covered in other videos, I am doing the Kronos cheat. I'm just selecting a Kronos. I have it set to speed of one, the samples at 10, and then just adding some shutter time. And that'll essentially give you motion blur. It's not obviously not the correct way of doing it, the physically correct way of doing it, but it'll get you by. The other thing is that the nice thing at least is that when you render this out, it'll give you an alpha channel, right? You will need to clean some some edges up just due to the nature of how Gaussian splats work. Depending on how well you do the photographing and the training of the Gaussian splat, you might not need to. But in this case, because I, I just did a very quick test, of course, I didn't have perfect edges for the area touching the table. And the other thing that actually is implemented, but I 
I can't seem to get it to work and I've already flagged it to the developer is that you have the option of rendering a depth pass from it. I can't get it to work. If I enable it, nothing happens. The only thing you have for quality is this drop down here. So you can go medium high, very high. Obviously we just want to go with very high. None of these other settings seem to affect how the depth map is rendered. I just can't get it to render. It seems to be working per Mac and maybe it's a Windows issue, just something to keep in mind. The other thing is that sometimes you have the need to connect the camera to an axis or you know some some other connections into a camera while those affect your camera the way this is set up at the moment it will not translate over into the Gaussian splatting node if I were to move this in space and it, it'll affect the camera as we see it in 3d space but it's not being transmitted over to the Gaussian splatting node I think that's a bit of a hiccup I flagged it with the developer I hope that gets fixed but keep in mind that you you need straight up vanilla cameras with nothing else attached to them and finally like I said before it's a bit unfortunate that we can't just load the PLY file here and view it in 3d space we have to go through the whole exporting into Alembic to then do the cheat here with the geotransform instead of us having full control going through a scan line render where we have overscan motion blur but I can imagine in the future that might be a reality the developer hasn't said that's a thing he's going to actively be looking for but this is a first step this is the first integration of Gaussian splat into Nuke so it can only get better it's still very exciting I'm very happy to have it I definitely encourage you to check it out because I've tested it enough that I feel confident that I will be using it moving forward. That's going to do it for today. It's a Gaussian Splat plugin and it works. So yeah, exciting times ahead. Remember, if you want to enter the drawing for the free license of the plugin, make sure that you're subscribed to the channel, leave a like and a comment below. And then after a week, I'll do a random drawing and reach out to the winner of the license. Thank you for watching. And until next time, stay curious. Cheers.